about and how many times I broke this or I fell there or this happened or and somehow I'm still alive and why why Sunday I'm trying to think question like what's going on what who am I what am I doing what does God want from me I believe in God yes I know that but what does God want from me and of course see we're in sand not for anything in sand is why are we in sin? Nessa. What's Nessa? To forget. Nesit. Right? Nesitu. Nesita. You need to forget. We're insane because we forget humans. Even in English, insane comes from the same. A person, if you look at the definition, what's an ins An insane is someone who always forgets. This is the definition. So as a human being, you forget sometimes these things. You know, you these trials and tribulations. I believe though by my studies and the, the, the interaction I have with people, that everyone, there's no one in this room, or no one is on this earth that hasn't been subjected to some kind of life-changing situation. A lost one, an accident, or something, some point in your life where you stop and you pause and everything slows down. And you think, is there something else maybe? Should I go this way? or that way. I don't think there's anyone who has not gone in that position. So, as human beings, sometimes we forget. So I forgot. Life moved on. And again though, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't forget. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will open this door, close that door, put you on this way, on the other way. Because He knows what's inside of you. He knows who you are and what you deserve. He knows if you're sincere in here. Things were happening in our life with parents and somehow Allah blessed us to move to Canada. Move to Canada, parents divorced, things, it seemed that, you know, you just have that feeling that I'm gonna move to Canada, first world country, I'm gonna buy these Nike shoes and Adidas, you know, and that, and I'm gonna be cool and go here and go there and, you know. And then when you get there, it's like I thought it's gonna, it's gonna get better, but it didn't. Parents are divorced, saying this is happening. My brother got involved in gangs, selling drugs, this, that, weapons, fights. And you're sitting there, a 14 year old, and looking at these things. Imagine yourself, the youth that are in this audience. You're coming up at that time, you got rap music, pop, all these movies, Hollywood, and all these pressures, all these roads are inviting you. Do this, do that, follow your desires, forget about everything, you're young. My brother's saying, come man, come with us, you know, come, I got, you. I got a job for you, come. Do this job, do that job, I'll pay you, this, that. How much? You pay all oh, $600 a job. And I'm sitting there with no Islam to tell me, don't do it. I'm thinking, I'm just like, I don't know, man. There's something stopping me. Something stopping me. Going to school, it was the first time I met Muslims. The first time. And of course, the first thing I heard from their mouth was like something, you know? Oh, I'm a Muslim in my religion. If we do this, blah, 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 you know, we go to heaven. I'm like, what? <laughs> I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> really? So like, you're confirming my, you're confirming my, you know, my stereotype. So, but then, there was one guy, subhanAllah, one person. And wallahi, I'm not saying, and I'm not going to say that Muslims, you know, born Muslims are this or that. Well, there's amazing people and f from everyone, converts, born Muslims, whoever. What Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wishes good for, He opens and in their heart to Islam. Be it born Muslim, be it, you know, com reverted converts, whatever term you want to use. But there's this one brother that was different. And it's so weird because your stereotype of a Muslim is, you know, a brown person, Arab or you know, Pakistani or Indian. And this guy was, he looked just like me. And he was Bosnian. And, you know, we kind of got close together and, you know, talking and being together. And he was praying. And he was also young and 
doing what young people, young people do. So I invited him to go with me to the dance, you know, to the school dance and to these dances and that. And so it became something normal for us. We hang around and go to dances. And I remember very well his brother, may Allah bless his soul, and still I'm very good friends with both of them, just talked on the phone, his brother was in Saudi Arabia, right now. And he would always like chase us, you know, like chase our car and like go after us. We would like try to sneak him out and all these things. And he's been, I was like, what do you, what's your problem? What's the problem with your parents, man? Like what? What's, what's their deal? What's their beef with you? Like, why can't you just let you go and have fun? And he explained to me, you know, because we're Muslims. And, and I said, I mean, it's, so look at this. I'm telling him, like, what's wrong with you? You don't want to go party and drink and girls and this and that. And he's telling me, no, you have to be nice. And I say, what's wrong with you? Right? That's what I'm saying. It was the judgment that it will be flipped. Bad will be, hey, it's good, man, come on. And the good will be, come on, man, what are you doing? You're wasting your time. Isn't it? So, he explained to me, you know, I would take him to the bar, to the club, to the party, whatever. But there was one thing that I remember. He never stopped praying. So I imagine, like dancing, and he's like, oh, I gotta pray. <laughs> I'm like, again, man? You just prayed like an hour ago. You know, I was like, Mother eh? Like, come on, man, just pray. He's like, come. And I had the job, too. I had, like, my job was to be a sutra. You know, like he's like, make sure no one passes between you and, and me praying. <laughs> yeah. And I'm sitting there kind of like, hey, what's up? You know, people passing by, like, how are you? And he's like, pray, Allah. So I'm, but you know, the one thing though, I used to look at him. Like, is he okay? <laughs> what's he doing down there? And you know, kind of like, I'm like, you know, like, I'm not really interested, but sometimes I'm like, okay, let me just like take a look. I'm kind of like, huh, oh, what's he doing? And again, and then I asked him when he came, you know, he finished his prayer. I asked him, like, man, like, kind of like just like dancing here with these girls, and then you go pray. I'm like, what's up with that? Isn't that that kind of contradiction? He's like, he said something that sticks with me, and this should be something, subhanAllah, that we should remember as Muslims, no matter what status you are in. He says, bro, honestly, I know I'm wrong. And I need to keep this door open to Allah, because one day I'm going to change. And that somehow put some respect in me towards him. Because I said, look, this guy, he's got some principles. One I have none. I mean, I believe in God. I pray to God. But it's like two different things. My life and my religions, two different things. My life and my religion is to that's where you look at Islam as the only faith that encompasses your whole life. You know, people, we used to go Saturday night up to four, sleep till eleven, go to church at twelve or something like that, right? And then you know repent. But he told me I'm gonna keep this door open for prayer. And just to connect to the brother, I remember. You gonna stop right now, shall we?
You can take one at the time, 18 minutes, and we'll be playing as a separate gym afterwards. Okay, I'll I think maybe I'll finish. No, no, minutes. you can take 15 minutes, we'll be playing afterwards. Okay. <laughs> Uh, it's so that you can continue the dog and then you can bring it as a general all together with the brain afterwards. So you can all be seated and we'll finish the talk and then we'll complete the question answer session and then we'll proceed for the day. Okay. So, so how long? How long do I have? Thank you. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, salatu salam, rasulullah. So back to, uh, to that important statement that he made. There was one thing that happened uh, at that time and it was because the expectations of moving to the West were so high and the results were so low at what happened, I began being depressed. I couldn't control it. Sorry. I would wake up in the morning and feel depressed, anxiety. And I was a very good student, but something happened. I couldn't go to school anymore, I would skip out a lot. I would try to, uh, to avoid different people and try to turn to partying or being with, you know, with friends for some kind of relief. But still, it didn't go away. And I remember to the point that I went to the doctor the doctor told me, you have to take this medicine. I mean, everyone's on medicine in, in, in Canada, in, in the States especially. Everyone's antidepressants. A lot of people are. It's like, that's the first thing you do, just take some antidepressants. You know? I said, but I, I, don't, I can't take these, you know. I know that my problem is not here. It's here, in the heart. There's an issue. My soul is struggling with something. And I don't know what it is. There was a fight that was going on. I remember this quote that it was in one of my exams, my English exams, that some of the greatest struggles or some of the greatest battles that were ever fought in the history of mankind is the battle that goes within yourself. And I was fighting with myself with a simple question. Who am I? I came from Romania, went to Canada, different culture. I was taught one thing, yet I find another thing. I was taught certain things about what I believe, yet there's some questions that I cannot answer. And I have an identity crisis. Most like what our youth are suffering from today. Look on the street, you see Ronaldinho everywhere. It's like hairstyle, everything, the beard lineup, whatever. These people don't have their own identity. They're adopting identities from different soccer players or football players or basketball players or movie stars or so on and so on because they don't have an identity. They're scared to adopt their own identity. And believe it or not, Muslim youth are suffering. They're infected by this. Because they don't have any role models to build their identity upon. Well, that's not, let me correct that. It's not that they don't have any. They don't know of any. We don't tell them of any. We let them pray to the TV and to the media and all the other culture that's developing out there, the pop culture. And they know everything about John Cena and all these things. Yet they don't know anything about Allah So I was just like that. I'm like, who am I? What am I? Who am I? I'm confused. That's one thing I hear for sure. I'm confused. And I had subhanAllah to the point that I was like, thinking, like suicidal thoughts, kind of like, what if I wasn't born? What if I were to die? What if I'm just, you know, let's end it. Because I'm waking up with the same feeling every day and I, I can't take it anymore. I had it. But I was fighting. I, I didn't let go. I, I was always, as, as I grew up, and as I, I'm always a very person who struggled through everything and fought his way through everything, through school, through, you know, the local soccer team, whatever. I always fought and did my best. And somehow, with time, with I had to put such a load on myself, a goal.